Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do um, a video on what I get up to with my images in Lightroom. Um, I do also use Photoshop and we'll touch on a little bit of what I do in Topaz Denoise which is fairly straightforward. Um, but this is going to be quite basic. Um, this isn't going to be um, you know, an in-depth vlog at all. Um, as I said, I am not a Lightroom Photoshop expert by any stretch of the imagination. So please bear with me. These people are probably going to watch this and, you know, they're probably not going to um, benefit from it. What I do is I'm going to go through fairly slow time showing you basically what I do um, with my editing. Now at the moment here on the screen, we've got a nice, easy, um, uh, digital edit to do for a, a female kestrel uh, on a post with a fairly plain background. So what we'll do now is we'll just go through, so I've loaded them from the camera, so from the either SD or CF Express type B card into the card reader, straight into Lightroom. I've got Adobe Photoshop on the other side there in case I need to do any edits on there. Obviously I can switch between both screens there. As and, as and when transferring that image to there to do some final touch-ups if I needed to. Um, but it's all downloaded in there. So it goes into camera. I've got 2022 here and I've got a series of um, files there with subdirectories inside and directories labeled. This is um, um, Bracecock Kestrel and um, that contains all those images from that shoot. And what I do is then I just work through and um, just choose the um, rejected images or I give the, the images a rating from one to five. So I go through a quick edit straight away, having a quick look, the ones that are out of focus, distracting elements, cut the tail off or whatever, go through, get rid of them. And then I revisit it again a little bit later, having a look through a little bit more closer this time at 100%, seeing if uh, the detail's okay, if the eyelid's closed over or um, there's a bit of feather movement or whatever and get rid of those. And I do like a process of um, cutting them down and I walk away and come back and then revisit because you can get a bit sort of, um, take sort of carried away with deleting. So I set them out and I reject the images, then I go through, select, reject, and then I get rid of the images and leave the ones that I want to um, save and then to edit further. But, um, and that's pretty much it. So I use Lightroom exclusively, I use Photoshop, and I also use Topaz Denoise as well for any images that are rather noisy. And even images like this, which have been shot um, using the R3, aren't too noisy, but sometimes I do a very final touch up just for the social media side as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dive in and we're gonna edit um, this file here, this Kestrel looking not at me, thankfully, looking away, probably looking at a small bird or some prey. And we're going to go through and we're going to do a basic edit on that. Um, like I said, guys, this is not going to be anything massively in depth. I do more to my images sometimes, um, but I try to do as little as possible, really. You know, spend five minutes on an image and then um, move on because I, you know, I find I need to get it right in camera rather than mess about in, um, in Lightroom and Photoshop changing too much of the image, you know, removing too many distractions, etc., which I can do, things like barbed wire and all that sort of stuff you can replace, but we might touch on that maybe um, a little bit later on. But uh, let's just dive in now and uh, have a look. And we've got the file downloaded from the compact flashcard into the main hard drive on the computer. And here we go, it's number 86. So double click on this image of a female Kestrel. As you can see there, that's our shot, so it's nice and close and we'll just now zoom in 100% and have a little look round. Slightly a little bit of out of focus there, a little bit blur, but actually we're looking at the eye and the, and the, bill, the beak there, and that's pin sharp, you can see a nice reflection in the eye. This is obviously unedited. This was a shot with the Canon R3 at one and 200, 2,000 functions per second at f5.6 ISO 3200, and I was using a teleconvert there, 1.4 Mark III, which is giving me 700 mil focal length. Obviously the talons are nice and sharp. So there we are, there's the image. Quite a uninteresting background there, which is quite nice. It then concentrates purely on the subject. Um, doesn't get any distracting elements there. Um, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the develop mode. So from the library, develop, and here we are. So in the develop mode, it's already there picking up. Um, the blue there on the image is picking up areas that um, of shadow and underexposure image there so we're losing detail there just just a, um, the highlight alerts there but I'm not too worried about that I've got those selected okay so we've got the image there it is looking pretty good and what we're going to do now is we're going to create 
uh, a new mask there and a good thing with the latest Lightroom is that you can auto select subjects so what it'll do now is it'll now detect subject and it's nice and easy this as an example because it will just detect the subject sometimes it will detect the post and some distracting elements like branches and bits so at the moment the whole of the bird there is pretty much covered and that's the mask you can switch overlay on or off okay so we have that on for a moment and then we go at the top there because we want to edit this whole bird um, as it is um, but we don't want to edit the eye at the same time so we want to delete the portion of red within the eye so going in at 100% you can move around the screen there here we go so we go subtract brush auto mask is um, it basically if you're going around the edge if you were to have this area here in red and you wanted to go around the edge it will basically it will feel the line of the bird and it won't go inside the bird it will just do bits around the edge but here we are at the moment so we want to go and delete this now so we we'll just go in there and delete you can go in at 200% uh, if need be um, as you can see there I'm just going around the eye getting rid of the mask that's there making sure that's all gone Okay, let me zoom back out again. Let me go to fit to screen. Okay, there we are at the moment. Take overlay off so we can see what we're doing to the bird. So right, at the moment, as we can see there, we've got some of the dark areas there, some of the shadows, so I can then lift the shadows. There we go, and those that detail is then come back. Keep an eye on the histogram there, it's not too bad. So we've still got a little bit around the eye, but we don't want to do too much. Let's have a look. There we go, that's good. It's gone from the eye a little bit there. Okay, so it's quite nice. The exposure's right. Um, you obviously can underexpose or overexpose the image. Um, let's put that back. I think the exposure actually is pretty good. We can lighten up a little bit there. 0.21 above. Contrast, I don't generally touch too much. Highlights, it's not too bad. Obviously, you go in there, you can put the highlights up or highlights down. Um, maybe just go slightly under just by that shadows we've done whites we don't have to worry about too much there is quite a bit of white there um, texture clarity dehaze don't have to worry about that too much saturation is just one and temperature here so temperature that gives it a nice golden glow too much um, underexposed gives it a cooler effect so at the moment I'm gonna it's, it's neutral at the minute and I'll probably put a little bit of temperature up there just slightly um, I shot in auto ISO. Bit of saturation there at the bottom. We don't want to oversaturate an image because that looks ridiculous and everything starts to look false. So just give it a little bit of a boost and be careful with that slider. Okay, and looking in at the sharpness, so you can unsharpen or sharpen. Um, we can go in a little bit more and have a look. So we're going to sharpen this image up a little bit. It's already pretty sharp, so we don't overdo it. I go to about 10, 11, 12, and that looks pretty good there. There's a little bit of noise in the background, but the bird detail is great. So we're happy with that. Let's zoom back out again. Right, okay, there's the bird. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, might up the saturation just a tiny bit. Maybe a bit of the black. So the black bit of the wing gives it a bit more depth. Let's have a look. Let's see. We don't want to introduce too much. There we go. Just until the shadows start creeping in. There we go, quite happy with that. Now I can pick certain elements out. I could select a mask and just brush it here and, sat and use the saturation and the temperature just to, to bring some of this up and then leave the bird as it is. But I'm quite happy with that at the minute um, and I don't like to overdo it. So that's looking pretty good. So that's done. That's one mask done now. Now we need to do another mask. So we zoom in at 100%. Go up to the top, another mask, plus create new mask, brush, and then we go to... Okay, we go to custom and we go to iris enhance. So in, we enhance the uh, the iris of the eye. So we show overlay so we know what we're, we're coloring in. There we go. You don't have to worry about it too much if it goes over a little. Okay, we take that off. And at the moment, it's gone off. We don't want to overdo this. Um, so we're looking at the eye. It's not bad. It auto selected the iris. The exposure's already gone in and it's overexposed it. And obviously the saturation, it's already put 40 in. Now you can play with that. Um, obviously if I do it here, the exposure, you know, that underexposes it and it goes dark, but you're losing a lot of detail. So it's, you don't want to overdo it because it looks ridiculous. So actually what it selected it at, sometimes I go a tad under. That for me is probably about right. 
Okay, so that's that done. There we go. So, so far, quite nice. Um, we can do a crop on the image. Generally, I do crop sometimes straight away. Um, there's a lot of... There we go. So we move that. So it's slightly off the frame, looking into the frame. So like a rule of thirds there. So it's not bang smack in the middle. It's almost like the Kestrel is then looking at something and it's look, staring into space more than being center of the image. Okay, so we're quite happy with that. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the angle rotation a little bit because the it's slightly off. Okay, and let's have a look at that and see what that's like. See, that's not too bad. A lot better. So it's looking into the image, happy with that, pretty pleased with that so far. Okay, we're going to create another mask now. So create mask, and we'll do a select subject now. So it's going to select the subject again. And what we're going to do is we're going to invert the mask, invert mask three. So what it's effectively doing there is it's going to ignore the kestrel and select the background instead. There we go. So the kestrel is left alone. So we've edited the Kestrel, we're happy with the Kestrel, and now it's going to change the background and the post. If you want to delete anything here, so you wanted to say delete, um, to delete brush, and you want to delete elements of this post, you just take that post away there and you start taking that away. Okay, and when you get to the edges here, so we're going up and we're getting close to the bird there. We don't want to be start to change settings on the bird. So we're going to, the areas that are not too near any of the bird, we can use this mask. But if you want to use auto mask, now this will do a trace. So it will kind of, it'll get rid of this, but it'll ignore the bird along the lines. As you can see there, so it's not going to change any of that. So I'm doing that so far down here. And that effectively do is works on lines and detail to take that away. Okay, so there we go. Job done. But now we're going to change the background. So we don't want to, we want to see what we're doing to the background. So we'll take the overlay off. There we go. And the back, this background at the minute is kind of bright. It's kind of not a lot going on there. And what we can do now is we can change the temperature of the background. So we, that looks kind of looks a bit false. We can make it cooler. So it can make it effectively blue. Isolate the subject like that. Or I want to make that a bit warmer. So a little bit warmer, a little bit more friendly. And I want to underexpose that a little bit. Just take it down. And then it gives the subject more punch. We don't want to overdo it. The highlights a little bit. There we go. So that's done. You don't want to um, probably add a little bit of saturation on there. Not too much. Don't need to sharpen it because there's no real detail there. What I do is I adjust the texture sometimes. So that makes the background very blurry. Um, and that gives it some detail. But the grain's increased. So I give it a little bit of texture. Okay. Done. So all in all... That's the image. Um, that's a 200%. That's 100%. Looking pretty good. Okay, if I need to move into Photoshop, I can then transfer this to Photoshop. But I'm actually quite happy with that image so far. And what I want to do now is go to the Develop. Sorry, go to Photo, Edit In, Edit In Topaz Denoise. Go for the selection there. JPEG, Adobe RGB, 8 bits at 72 um, resolution. So Edit In. And now it'll bring up Topaz. Takes a bit of time. Now, we never like to overdo it in Topaz Denoise because um, you can over-edit over, over -edit it. And I, I think, to be fair, for me, it really doesn't do it um, much. I like it soon to fit so I can see what I'm doing. The moment it's working down the bottom here, it's now updating with the settings. So it's removing noise at 17 and enhancing more sharpness. Now, I don't tend to put an awful lot of sharpness on it. It's at 25. It's too much. It's already been sharpened in Lightroom. So I'll take that down to about 10. And the noise isn't too bad, so I'll remove that a little bit. Um, and then you can apply the settings there. And that will then save that and go back into it. So you've got standard there, clear, low light, severe noise. Um, I don't mess around with it too much. Recover origin of detail. It's fairly straightforward, really. So it's still updating at the bottom. And if you do a split view, this is what it's like beforehand. And you put the, and this is what it's looking like now. So it's getting rid of that noise and it's looking very clean. There we go. So overall, I'm quite happy. You don't want to overcook this and do too much as it starts to look unrealistic. But for me, that looks really good. I apply it. It's now saving at the top. Obviously, depending on how quick it is, depending on how quick your computer is, I've got an awful lot of uh, memory on this computer, so it does whip along pretty quick. Um, just processing the last bit. 
There we go. Back into Lightroom. And that's the edit done now. That's been edited back as a JPEG, and that is the image. That was the image, is the raw file, and that's the image now. And I'm quite happy with that, looking at the Kestrel. Very sharp, probably could have done a little bit more depth of color on there, but actually, all in all, quite happy. So, go to File, we go to Export, and we'll just name it Kestrel Edit uh, Goon Hilly for Goon Hilly. Um, I save it there as a JPEG, sRGB, Adobe RGB, doesn't really matter. Limit the file size to 1.5 megabytes. I don't want to be too big for social media purposes. Um, you can resize it there, sharpen for screen, etc., etc. It goes on and on and on. But basically, um, you can put in subfolders there, um, make the file size maximum, say it's a TIFF, whatever you want, resize to fit for competitions and things. There's lots of different stuff on there. But So we now export the image. <laughs> Okay, and then coming out of there, it saves to my desktop that one. And we go to Gestural Edit Goon Hilly. And there we have it, finished image of a Kestrel. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, and that is what I basically do. Um, if there's loads of distracting elements in there, like trees, I can do removal, um, I, can, I can then clone. Um, you know, all sorts of stuff. I could get rid of a barbed wire fence that's going across if I wanted to, but I don't tend to do stuff like that as much as I can. I shot this Kestrel specifically like this so I didn't have to get the barbed wire fence in. And um, But yeah, all in all, nice and sharp, pretty good image. Um, yeah, happy with that. So that is my basic edit so far. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that quick edit there of the uh, female Kestrel. Um, you know, I didn't go overly in depth because for many of you, you probably already know, many of you may not. Um, but if you think this is useful and you'd like um, to see more, we can go into things like subject and object removal, dodging and burning, um, you know, moving stuff around the image. We can do some more layering. We can do uh, loads of other stuff um, on there. Can go through output to printing, um, you know, saving the file for maximum resolution, you can save them to TIFF files, saving files for competitions, there's loads you can do. But for me, going through my images, for things like social media, Facebook, Instagram, and all that sort of stuff, I kind of, that's what I do. And if I were to do an edit for a competition or for a print, I'd spend an awful lot more time touching up certain areas. Like we went through the Kestrel there, and I said to you at the end that I possibly would have given it a bit more temperature, a bit more saturation on the wing, showing that nice depth of colour, that chestnutiness on the Kestrel, um, and maybe um, done a little bit more with the post, making the post a little bit more, because it's quite an old post, lots of little cracks and there's little bits of lichen on there, might have enhanced that a little bit, give that a little bit more punch. But that's a basic image there, sometimes when you select um, find subject and it doesn't always find the subject because it's in a cluttered background great tit in a tree it picks up a lot of clutter around sometimes you have to then go in and do that manually so you select the mask you have the brush and then you go and color in the bird take out the eye um, and then tidy up around the edge and then you edit the bird then um, and it is quite difficult but that's a nice easy clean image there um, if you've got any questions please leave them below um, or you know, get in contact with me or ask any questions you will. And if you want to go through a bit on Photoshop as well, what I do in there. But to be honest, Photoshop really is I get rid of things like distracting elements. Um, and that's pretty much it, dodging and burning, um, you know, things like that. And that's all I use it for. And I, I use that in conjunction with Lightroom. And all I do is save changes in Photoshop. It saves it back into Lightroom and then you can transfer it then into uh, um, Topaz Denoise as well. But uh, thanks guys. Sorry it's taken me so long um, to get back to you all um, with this video. Uh, I've been means to do it and today's the perfect day. And I hope you found that useful. If you want me to go through it slow time and I went too quick, please let me know. And last but not least guys, um, this is my new wildlife calendar for 2023 with a selection of my favorite images on the back. It is quite large um, and the details can be found um, in the vlog description, a link to my website to purchase one of these calendars and I can basically dispatch these anywhere in the world. Um, any questions, please get in contact. Also, a portion of this, one pound per calendar, will go to Nature First, which is the Alliance for Responsible Nature Photography, who I'm an ambassador for and all the great work they do. Um, but if you're interested, guys, please just see in the vlog description below. 
But I uh, hope you all found that useful. Um, thanks very much for watching, guys. Any questions, please leave them in the vlog description below or contact me through my various social media channels. And as I said, guys, you know, this is very basic. I am not, by any stretch of the imagination, an expert on Photoshop and Lightroom. And if anybody there, I'm sure people are watching who've got lots of tips for me, um, how I can improve my digital workflow, please let me know. Um, but as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>